The Back Rooms. Join the fun, smiley face. Entity number 67, party goers, smiley face. Concord Entity Classification System, Habitats, Unknown, Indexed Entity Threat Score, Danger, 5, Intelligence, B, Class, Chimeric, Properties, Viral A, Reality Altering, Aggressive, Fun, Never Grab a Hydra by its Tail. We set the perfect trap. The partygoers took the bait. An anonymous tip resulted in our information technology, IT, personnel hacking several partygoer websites. The files from this digital treasure trove were moved to an offline computer in a secure and quote-unquote secret location. Two partygoers, so quiet that we almost missed them, silently circumvented our locks and slipped into the vault. We outnumbered them ten to one. The battle was brief. The closest entity made no noise and never flinched as our best swordsman lopped off both arms. Its eel-like appendages now wiggled on the concrete floor and snapped angrily at the air. Operative Tiger then followed through with a thrust that glanced off as if hitting stone. It was an awkward moment. A hidden chest carapace on each partygoer flipped open, and a pair of anomalous arms with huge clawed hands shot out and gouged eyeballs and freed human entrails. The insides of these creatures were a nightmarish conglomeration of human, phobic centipede, and crustacean. Our team was divided into two groups, screaming and dying. Only sheer luck and a fire axe to the head of a partygoer turned the tide. The rumors are true. Partygoers can turn people into them. Three of us made it out unscathed. We had to kill six of our own before they transformed completely. Signed, Maya Oberlin, Meg Team Party Over. Image Caption, Diagram by Maya Oberlin. Note the head and tail of a phobic centipede. Meg Archives. This illustration, more functional than artistic, depicts the chimera in what Maya describes as its berserker mode. The arms of the phobic centipede component are anomalous, and those razor-sharp claws can move with incredible speed and accuracy. She reported that the inverted head took the form and voice of her deceased aunt and taunted, They're dead. You're next. Until an axe to the partygoer's face ended the torment. Acknowledgements. Only vetted and approved information from three sources appears here. 1. Debriefings of MEG personnel who report critical incidents involving partygoers. 2. The interviews and journals of Daniel Kebab, as he allegedly witnessed the horrific 10-day transformation of Deacon Duncan into Partygoer Zero. This first partygoer was the tragic result of no clipping gone wrong. We have included files from partygoer websites entitled History in the Making and Fun Party Ideas. The contents of this mega document are consistently verified against our physical copy. Habitats. While we recently learned the possible origin of partygoers, we have yet to locate the sanctuary that they now call home. Like us, they are able to move across levels using entrances and exits, leading to encounters throughout the back rooms. Party decor is usually a big red flag. Posters and fake database entries attempt to lure wanderers to their doom. Image Caption 8.5 by 11 Time for Fun Smiley Face Poster with Party Goer Quote Unquote Handprint Meg Archives Countless rumors claim to reveal consistent entrances to this Quote Unquote Level Fun, such as no clipping into the ceiling of Level 1. These have all proven to be false. Misinformation is abundant, and no doubt Party Goers are behind it. What we do know about Partygoer Headquarters comes from the recent hacking of several of their websites. Quote unquote, Level Fun is a cruise ship filled with party rooms. Seemingly by design, their pages neglect to provide many key details about the level, including entrances and exits. As we are left guessing the true nature of this place, the search continues. Discovery An apology to wanderers. When was the last time that you drooled over a juicy burger or stuffed your face with cake and sweet icing? You probably answered, not since I arrived here. Food is a precious commodity in the back rooms. 
These were my thoughts exactly, as I was chosen to create and head Team Party Over for the Major Explorer Group a few years ago. With my old background in law enforcement, I saw the partygoer situation as an open and shut case. Ordinary people were eating ordinary people. This was a cult of cannibals, nothing more, nothing less. Clear and convincing evidence pointed to human perpetrators. Drawing posters and decorating for parties, altering official websites, and creating traps were human behavior. The partygoers wore costumes to hide their identities and strike fear into victims. Witnesses reported seeing human eyes and lips behind these masks. Those snake-like arms were probably protective sleeves hiding handheld cutting tools. Hypnosis and hallucinogens could explain any reported paranormal aspects of encounters. All we needed to do was apprehend and interrogate one of these cultists. Game over. Even when Daniel Kebab came forward with his woebegone tale of Partygoer Zero, his testimony was not credible to me. Outlandish, with no proof. I discounted it out of hand. Recent events showed me the error of my ways. Seeing my deceased friends in various degrees of transformation and the partygoer corpses were undeniable horrors. My steadfast narrow-mindedness gave this enemy time that we could not afford. May this letter serve as my resignation from the Meg and team party over. Forgive me. Signed, Dan Overbrook. Please note that Team Party Over had a strict policy of discarding all reports that suggested partygoers were entities and not human cultists hiding among us. Accurate reports of many early encounters are long gone. Description: These tall, bipedal nightmares have smooth, leathery skin. Typically, their skin color is a bright yellow, although it is not unheard of for other color variants to exist. Notable sightings include red, blue, green, and white partygoers. One detail that remains consistent across all variations, however, is a carved smiley face smeared with blood that perfectly matches the grin of a phobic centipede. Partygoers are predominantly humanoid, with their legs possessing a thick, blocky shape. The chest area is shielded by a subtle carapace. They also have long, noodle-like arms that end in sucker mouths full of hooked teeth. If an arm latches onto you, these will be your last few moments as a human being. Only death supersedes transformation. Image Caption First ever sketch of a partygoer from the Journal of Daniel Kebab, Meg Archives. Behaviors Partygoers consider themselves to be the apex predators of the backrooms. They hunt humans for food, sport, and to increase their numbers by turning us into them. While there is no shortage of hostile entities, what sets partygoers apart is their enhanced intelligence and organized society. They work in teams and set up traps for their prey. Not to mention, they have in-depth knowledge of machinery and computer programming and coding. Their knowledge of human biology is best put to use by concentrating on torture methods. Much like phobic centipedes, partygoers enjoy tormenting their victims. Despite having many similar qualities to humans, partygoers despise mankind. Their knowledge and feelings towards humans appear to be inherited from Partygoer Zero, who acts as a leader figure for these entities. Defeating a Partygoer there is a distinct sequence to follow in terminating a partygoer. Those external, quote-unquote, lamprey eel arms, needing to be the most flexible part of the body, have very thin flesh and are the most vulnerable target. Cutting off these arms serves two purposes. It negates the ability to transform humans into enemies. It also encourages the partygoer to take on its berserker mode in order to continue fighting. Like the jaws of an alligator or a crocodile, the chest carapace of the partygoer is held shut with terrific force. When closed, the muscles to open it are far weaker by comparison. Once the chest hatch opens, attack the entity in its secondary weak spot, the face and head area. This will neutralize the human component of the chimera. The partygoer will fall dormant and exposed. A four-person medical squad was on scene and standing by in the event of injuries during the above-mentioned partygoer skirmish. 
what we really needed were more body bags. A decision was made to conduct an impromptu examination of the two partygoer corpses as we awaited reinforcements. Our findings were radioed, in progress, to the station chief in the event that help might come too late. The major explorer group deserved answers. The first thing we noticed was that the black smoke given off by phobic centipedes reeked of burning sulfur, or what the ancients would call brimstone. We also confirmed that the organs, eyes, nose, mouth, and ears on the phobic centipede's head served no purpose in seeing, breathing, eating, or hearing. The head was nothing more than a lure for humans. Our third observation was of the corpse of the partygoer face down on the floor, slowly walking away on little centipede legs. Big secret, smiley face. Show big secret. The chemical composition of the exoskeleton of a phobic centipede contains both fuel and oxidizer. When properly ignited, the exoskeleton will burn fiercely and completely, until only ash is left. However, you cannot just light the centipede with a match. Flares, black powder, fire salt, and pyroil have all been proven to reliably initiate combustion. This is how the Major Explorer Group has been quietly dealing with the phobic centipede threats on level 365 and elsewhere. End big secret. Maya Oberlin demonstrated how it was done. She flipped the monster on the floor face up before it could fully recover, armed an incendiary charge, and dropped it among wriggling centipede legs. Fire in the hole, she cried, and she kicked the carapace closed. Suffering thrashed beneath the hot yellow flesh. That smell lasted longer than the centipede. We dealt with the other partygoer the same way. The fuel and oxidizer combination would even burn in a vacuum or underwater. Signed, Harry Jenkins, Meg Team Party Over. Biology. Updated. Despite the lack of equipment and resources, we can still conclude, with some certainty, that our examination of the internal tissues, organs, etc. of a partygoer reveals nothing to indicate that anything alive lived in there. We know that partygoers are animate beings that demonstrate consciousness and intelligence. We can only say that it is impossible, given our current understanding of biology and physiology. The hide of a partygoer is superior to the woven Kevlar material found in the front rooms. Not only is it fireproof and resistant to cuts and punctures, the skin has the same properties as a Faraday suit, which allow partygoers to work in high-voltage power situations without risk of electrocution, and acts as a shield to electromagnetic radiation. None of this, of course, explains why the speed and totality of the transformation from human to partygoer occurs. No known biological metamorphosis is at work here. Internet Secrets There is disagreement among Meg officials as to the accuracy of the data found within the hacked partygoer websites. Is it factual? Is it exaggerated? Can it be nothing more than fabricated disinformation? In any event, it is horrific. Dr. John Reinhardt leads the consensus that the information is correct. Partygoer Zero seems obsessed with painstakingly documenting the creation of his legions and their imminent rise to power over humanity in the backrooms. Most of the information below learned from these websites could not be obtained in any other way. How Partygoers Communicate as the transformation from human into partygoer completes, familiar senses of touch, taste, and smell quickly decay. Hearing is reduced, and vision turns nearsighted. They no longer feel pain. The sensory vacuum is filled with emerged human and phobic centipede consciousness. This new awareness communicates using short-range telepathy, with one harsh caveat. Mental transmissions are based on eyesight. Partygoers must fix their gaze on the intended receiver in order to successfully send any psychic message. Reception of this telepathy suffers from no such drawbacks. People often mistake this method of communication for spoken language in familiar voices. This is why partygoers hunt humans in tight packs and always keep one another in sight. You can never catch a partygoer alone. Please remember that. Silly Obsession 
Why do partygoers party? The answer to that question festers in the mind of partygoer Zero. Deacon Duncan dropped out of college when his wealthy parents died in that car crash, throwing lavish parties for friends that stopped being friends when the money ran out. With his inheritance wasted and prospects bleak, the marine biologist wannabe accepted the position of custodian at Happy Times Aquarium. Every Saturday became an obsession as parents rented the ever-popular Happy Times party room to host a celebration for the children. Deacon had all of the work and none of the fun. Life was his private hell. Weaponizing parties is payback. The Bakery Online videos depicting the partygoer quote-unquote bakery process are too graphic to be displayed here. Warning, even the written descriptions of how partygoers create their quote-unquote baked goods are unsettling. Partygoers eat with their toothed arms, just as honeybees in the front rooms sip nectar from flowers and regurgitate it to make honey, partygoers use their toothed appendages to scrape and mince the muscle tissue from the skeletons of their human victims, both living and dead, and regurgitate the red pulp into cake and cupcake tins. This burgundy foam congeals into a texture with a taste that is reportedly somewhat sweeter than red velvet cake. Other partygoers digest human organs, such as the liver and pancreas, and regurgitate them into a froth that hardens into quote-unquote frosting. When living humans donate the ingredients, the end result is referred to as royal velvet cake and royal icing. Image caption. Do not eat. Meg archives. Red balloons. Just as some baby animals from the front rooms are covered in stripes or spots, most newly transformed partygoer quote-unquote interns carry a floating red balloon, seemingly tied to their arm by a cord or string. The balloon is a physical manifestation of sentimentality, symbolizing hope. The cord is not a string at all. It is the embodiment of brief emotional attachment. The cord disappears, setting the balloon free when those nostalgic feelings dissipate. Some partygoers never materialize balloons. The Rabbit Hole Chat The following historic chat between partygoer Zero, left column in bold, and an unknown guest, right column in italics, sent shockwaves through our major explorer group. There are organizations that would use this material to justify the elimination of facelings from the back rooms. Discovering the identity of this guest and any quote-unquote interests represented is of paramount importance. Guest, you are facing extinction. Partygoer Zero, you are interrupting. Partygoer Zero, who are you? Guest, the paranormal glue that holds the partygoers together is loosening. Partygoer Zero, you are mistaken. Guest, the genius that you are will solve this riddle in time. Partygoer Zero, your first correct statement. We are done here. Guest, but not before it is nearly too late. Guest, I represent interests seeking a subtle change in this timeline. Guest, they want your quote unquote magical cure instituted now. Partygoer Zero, and what, pray tell, is this panacea? Guest, it will be discovered by accident, by one of your own. Deeper down the rabbit hole. Guest, a partygoer will mistakenly bite a faceling. Guest, it will turn. Guest, into a party host. Partygoer Zero, explain please. Guest, creating party hosts is your next step to greatness. Deepest down the rabbit hole. Partygoer Zero, Nothing will jeopardize my authority. Guest, the party hosts are immortal. Guest, they are no threat to your power. Partygoer Zero, tell me more. Guest, you will feed your party hosts a steady diet of living facelings. The party hosts will resist, motivate them. Guest, they must eat to evolve into perfect party hosts. Partygoer Zero, this sounds complicated. Guest, not at all. Guest, once party hosts turn golden, they are perfect. Guest, when perfection eats, perfection weeps. Guest, collect their Luca tears. Partygoer Zero, Luca? 
guest, last universal common ancestor. Guest, these aren't really tears. Guest, think of it as spinach for Popeye. Party goer zero. What? Guest, goodbye. I am a scientist. If I give you my learned explanation for the mechanism that transforms people into party goers, you will scoff. Folklore is full of mythological creatures that turn people into monsters with a bite. Vampires, werewolves, and zombies come to mind. According to centuries-old legends, these undead also feed on humans. In the back rooms, we hide what we do not understand under a blanket term. We call it, quote-unquote, anomalous. It sounds very scientific. I have examined the corpses of interrupted transformations. The curse is not caused by infection, venom, or disease. This is supernatural. One might even mistakenly label it as demonic. There is irony in a quote-unquote demon that burns easily. Irony aside, I suggest we classify Entity 67 as undead. Signed, Dr. John Reinhardt, PhD. Final warning. Partygoers display their smiley face emoticon symbol whenever they alter official Meg information. Smiley face. Do's and don'ts. Do. Run. Distance is your best chance for survival. Partygoers are nearsighted and slow. Tell anyone immediately if you are bitten. Seconds count. Then, attack the partygoer with everything human you have left. Go for its eyes. It is better to die this way than to transform into one of them. Don't. Hesitate. Just because you see them doesn't mean they can see you. Give up. Keep something, anything between you and them until you escape. Forget to have fun. Smiley face.